U.S. inflation comes in cool. Spa and the Fashini Group results. A Chinese battery maker worth having a look at. Buenergen Helium is flowing, but they're still testing. Centova seller is gone or moved. Coalition talks ongoing, but the RAND is moving much stronger. Hello and welcome to JC Direct, episode 591 for 13 July. My name is Simon Brown. Let's kick off straight away with that U.S. inflation. It has come out just ahead of uh, me starting recording. I'm recording, of course, Wednesday afternoon. This is core inflation. 3.4%. 3.4%. The market had been looking for 3.5%. Previous was 36 This is a move in the right direction. It's a good print. We've seen uh, U.S. Treasuries come under pressure as a result. Rand strengthening, dollar weakening, uh, whichever way around you want to spin that one. But certainly a great number. We've got the FOMC later this evening, 8.30 our time on Wednesday. They're not going to change rates today. But this does make a case for perhaps a cut or two towards the end of the year. I've been hopping on about this forever and a day. It's coming, just not yet. It's going to be late this year. A lot of folks are saying September. I don't know that they can do it September. I can't help thinking that that is very close to a election and mm, gets messy. November, December, yeah, that looks very possible. It does, of course, mean... I think we might see a September and a November cut. Quarter each, not a lot. Take us down 11.25 for prime, but definitely moving in the right direction. Last week, of course, the European Central Bank cut by 0.25%. We also had uh, the Canadian, what's theirs called? I'm not even sure. Royal Bank of Canada, maybe. Uh, They cut as well last week. So we are seeing... Finally, after a long time of these high rates, initially ratcheting up, then sitting flat. Remember we were going to get rate cuts in January? Well, that's what the market said. The market was wrong, fundamentally wrong. Finally, we're starting to see those first bits of rate cuts come down. We're starting to see some good data. We had U.S. unemployment out uh, last week uh, at at, at sub-4%. It's been sub-4% now for like uh, uh, years and That's the longest run in like five decades. It's it's astounding. The U.S. economy remains strong, which gives Jerome Powell and his team time for pause, I suppose we could say best. Certainly, they've got time for pause, but you don't want to pause too long. Things start to get a little bit messy, and uh, at some point, you need to be cutting. I appreciate you can, I suppose, in a sense, say, well, you know what? We could get a little bit behind the curve, and then we could get aggressive with it, but I'm not sure that's necessarily a great idea either. And then one of the joys of my MoneyWeb Now show, which I do uh, every morning, 6.30 live at the MoneyWeb website, uh, is that, or the app, podcast just after seven, is that you get some of your guests sometimes throw out something which you'd never heard of before. Uh, And Wednesday morning, just that happened. Odgo Magwenchu from Tribe South Africa, I was chatting to him, and he mentioned a stock, C-A-T-L, in China. And I'm like, I've never heard of this. I've never heard of it. Contemporary Amperex Technology Company Limited. Okay, still never heard of it. Code is 300750. What do they do? Battery technology. The, the, the EV space right now is all about Tesla. Uh, BYD, build your own dreams to a degree as well. Uh, Rivian, certainly. And yes, a lot of the traditional automakers are also doing EVs or hybrids. But what I like about this is it's battery technology. So it's not just batteries and EVs, it's charging stations, but it's batteries for corporate as well, your corporate solutions. You know, the beauty of renewable energy is lovely when the wind is blowing or the sun is shining, but then nighttime comes and you you need batteries. If you ain't got battery, you're either back onto uh, ESCOM in our case locally or you're diesel, I suppose. Batteries are an important part of this greening of the, the, the grid, not just in South Africa, but globally at the same time. So what we've got here is a company that does exactly just that. Uh, it's not massively expensive. It's got a dividend yield. 
Ombu, what, 2.66%. Shares outstanding, we can see there has been an increase over the last five years, but not massively so. I was looking at CrowdStrike. Man, they just issue shares like there's no tomorrow. PE's under 20, price to book four times. This is not a crazy stock in terms of, of valuations in, in sense. Let's go look at what the price target 27 buys and seven strong buys no holds sell or strong holds uh, they say average price of 259 currently trading 188 uh, low price target 205 and high price target 360 so the uh, analysts who cover it all think it's nice and cheap and let's go have a look at a graph with some squiggles yep that's the graph that we want to look at uh, we've always got to go and make this linear of course and then we need to go and say, please make it weekly, and then say, make it go out to five years. It, it's been under a bit of pressure. We have got a resistance zone of sorts floating just around there. But this is one I need to do some more digging on. I only got heard about it this morning. I need to get more information, get more sense around it. But I got to say, I like the, the idea. It's like we all know NVIDIA. Of course we do. You know, NVIDIA, yeah, great stock. Uh, but what about those around NVIDIA? ASMO, who provide the equipment to make fancy chips. Uh, TSMC out of Taiwan, who actually make the chips. In other words, in a sense, the shovel sellers. Although NVIDIA would be the shovel seller, I suppose. And then the, the, the other companies would almost be... They sell the handles, or maybe they manufacture. NVIDIA designs and they manufacture those shovels. So this one, Contemporary Amperex Technology Company Limited. It is a mouthful. It's one I want to do a whole bunch more digging into. Uh, it certainly, I think it looks interesting. I think there, there might be something there. Maybe there isn't. But let's go have a look-see. I just like the angle that comes from it. We had uh, spa results. So they, they, I suppose best we could say about spa results is they were broadly as expected. We'd seen the update. The market is liking it. It's marked it up some 8-odd percent. So they're saying, yep, this is looking better but uh, better doesn't necessarily mean brilliant. It's still, I mean, th th there's a five-year chart, five-year weekly chart. It is a horror show for this particular company. If we look through it, turnover was up 7.9%. Nice. Uh, operating profit looking decent enough. Uh, diluted headline earnings per share down. Uh, they've got some discontinued operations in there. If we go through performance into a little bit more detail, um, what we're seeing is that South Africa and then their island uh, West UK is doing okay. Switzerland continues to struggle. Poland, of course, is discontinued. But here's the thing. Sparholz, this is South Africa, reported growth of 4% against internally measured wholesale price inflation of 7%. They're going backwards in volumes. Now, that's not unique to Spa. I will pick and pay is just going backwards in terms of everything uh so you know uh, but even ShopRite had this challenge yes their their delivery services what 400 odd 463 percent higher off a very low base tops is doing well we're always going to be drinking the uh, pharmacy side yep that's going to be doing well we're always going to be buying drugs as i said the bwg group island in southwest england is doing okay switzerland remains a problem and then discontinued is poland the good news for poland is they have found a potential buyer the problem is they've still got 200 million of debt, which they've basically taken off the balance sheet. But if the buyer doesn't take that debt as well, then they are in a spot of bother. And they still have some issues with the SPA, uh, sorry, SAP implementation down in KZN. And in fact, they say the decision has also been made to implement a more cost-effective warehouse management system that is better suited for our business. Now, that's not throwing everything away. seems like they'll be keeping some of the sap, but certainly they are throwing some of it away. Nasty. Just nasty, nasty, nasty. Look, by all accounts, sap integration is hard, and this just proves it. Resistance, 100, about 110, and then an a again at about 100, uh, and uh, yeah, 120 is the next up there. So SPA results, you know, the SPA chart and the pick and pay chart. And let's go have a, a quick squizzit pick and pay because that's not looking too bad 
either. Pick and pay chart has certainly come to the party to a degree, but you've still got a massive rights issue coming there, and that's going to cost a pretty packet when they finally come and say, you know, here's the deal, folks. Uh, let's do this four billion rights issue. They are. Uh, I want the weekly chart, please, folks. Always want me a weekly chart. They're kind of back at that resistance level. If you recall, I had taken a position in pick and pay. Uh, I had got smacked in the face by that giant red candle. I'd expected uh, uh, rights issues, but I hadn't expected it, it to be as bad as it was. Four billion rights issue, listing boxer, just an absolute horror show. It's back at resistance, and I'm watching. If it breaks that resistance... I'll try again. You know what? I, I, I got smacked in the face the first time, uh, but I'm happy enough. I'm prepared to try and get smacked in the face a second time. If need be, I suppose you could say maybe, well, it's, tra it's trading, right? My pick and pay is not a long-term. My, my shop rights are long-term holding. But in trading, sometimes things go wrong. You get into the position, you get smacked in the face. You now don't never trade again or never trade that instrument again. You learn from it. Okay, what did I learn from the pick and pay? Quite simple, that the best laid plans can run amok. My, my logic was sound, my technical view was sound, but the data came out worse than not only I'd expected, the market had expected. And we could tell that because, well, there was a giant collapse in the share price. So it wasn't just me who got massively surprised by it and was like, what the heck is happening here? Uh, no one had thought it was going to be as bad as it ended up being. And that is, as I say, the nature of the beast. It sometimes just gets horrible. I want to pull up uh, the Fashini Group. We had results from Fashini Group as well. They came out on Friday and uh, the market... The market really liked it. And in fact, the market liked all of it so much so that we even saw, can I detach that? Yes, I can. Uh, so, so much so that the market uh, pushed all of the clothing retailers higher. Fashini is parking at around about a resistance level. It's worth keeping a close eye on. A, a break higher here is looking good. They've got records all over the place. Bash, which is all of their various different brands, put into one online offering doing really, really well for them. Uh, in fact, we're seeing the online offerings. I mentioned it was Spark, 463%. I know, very low base. But we've seen good growth in that uh, sort of online space. So the Fashini Group, not bad numbers. A uh, bit of resistance lurking just around there. But if we look at all of them, so PPH, Pepco. Uh, Pepco responded a bit. This is still not a chart I can get massively uh, excited about. Uh, True is... Again, a fair chunk of resistance sitting at about the 83-ish level there as well. The one that I hold is Mr. Price because it gave me the break. It's running higher. My entry is around 170-ish if memory serves correct, but I'm watching these clothing retailers because as soon as things start to improve for the consumer, now we have seen inflation coming down a bit. We've got another inflation print next week. That certainly is helping them to a degree. That is absolutely a, a good news story for, uh, for, for consumers. And then when interest rates start coming down, not out of the woods, but I can't help thinking. In fact, Njibul and Zabandi mentioned it to me once. He's like, you know what? Like, Clothes are, are, are discretionary, but at some point you've got so many holes in your clothes, they're no longer discretionary, and you've got to actually just go and spend that money. We've got two events coming up. Uh, the one's been changed for dates. So I'll come to that in, in, in a second. The one I want to touch on first is the uh, trading. We're doing uh, trading as a side hustle, so basically trading 101. It is next Thursday, the 20th. It is at 5.30 p.m. You can attend the webcast if you're up in Johannesburg. We're doing it at the Standard Bank uh, head office in Rosebank. Uh, always great fun to be back in person again. I'm busy putting together the presentation. Look, I love presenting. Make no mistake about that. More than anything, I'm a teacher and a presentation is just my ability to absolutely be a teacher. So I always enjoy it. And, and this one's going to be great fun. It's going to say, you want to be a trader. Where do you start? How do you start? How much capital do you need? What equipment do you need? What books should you be reading? What platforms? All of those sort of things. Tax, risk management, psychology. I'm going to cram all of this into 60 minutes. 
You think I talk fast in this podcast, you ain't seen nothing just yet. We're going to cram stuff in. And then you're doing income, income investing with One Invest ETS. We're looking at bonds and re uh, real estate investment trusts. We've had to move the date on that two weeks out to 9 July. Both of those, justonelap.com slash events for more information. So Renogen is finally getting their helium flowing, although let's be clear, there's still some things to do. Um, yes, they've got the helium, but uh, there's, a, there's a little bit more than just that. But they've had problems. I don't think I need to detail the problems. I think they are well known to all and sundry. Um, they told us back in May that they were doing some, they, they were getting the system up and running and then taking it down and then getting it running again from a cold start just to make sure that they could. Or is it a warm start? Because of course, when you do helium, you take it down to minus 260 something degrees. Anyway, from a, a new start, let's say. Uh, they've been testing that. The uh, OEM provider is still on site they, another week or so, and then all things equal, touch wood, helium will be flowing. 18 months late, and that is on the rejig schedule already. Although the rejig schedule for phase one was the, the pandemic stood in the way, so I'm not going to hit them too hard for that. But certainly uh, Renogen is finally uh, getting their helium going and I'm touching wood when I say that. I am a shareholder there. Folks say, am I a happy shareholder? Uh, no. Let's be clear. No, of course not. This is a share price of 10 rand and 10 cents. Uh, if I told you I was happy, that would be lying. But I'm a, what's the word I'm looking for? This is not rolling out as, a, as unexpected, necessarily. I had better hopes. I'd hoped that phase one would get up and running on time and on budget and that everything would work smoothly. It hasn't. But that is the nature of the beast here. That is absolutely what you expect with what is essentially a, a startup junior miner. In this case, gas, it's LNG that is flowing and going to customers and helium. You're going to run into challenges. Uh, phase two is going to be scary. I mean, that's a, you know, what, a billion dollars or whatever of, of, of cost, 700, whatever. It, it is a giant project. It's going to cost a packet and five tenths. So I spoke last week about Santova and I said that there was a buyer at 750 and I was right because the buyer phoned me up the next day and said, yep, yo, it's me. No, I'm not going to tell you who it is, but there was a buyer at 750 uh, and I said that there was a seller at around the 780. That seller seems to maybe have either stepped away completely uh, or has maybe pushed their numbers a little bit higher. The key thing here is that it's important to try and spot these because in this particular case, the, the fact that it was sort of stuck between those two levels, 750 and 770, if you were looking to buy, you had to say, well, how much is the buyer holding it up versus the seller holding it down? Well, we now know it was the seller holding it down. They've lifted their bid. They're either at a higher level or they have left. I can't see either way. There's no direct evidence, but it's a, a useful I mean, tools are a big word for what I'm looking for here, but you get the sense of what I'm certainly uh, talking about in that regard. And then I'm recording this on Wednesday afternoon. Parliament will sit, the seventh parliament will is convene the word I'm looking for, will convene on Friday at 10 o'clock. They will uh, vote for a speaker. They will swear in all the MPs. Then they will vote for a speaker. Then they will vote for a deputy speaker. And then they will vote for a president. Of course, the president's almost certainly going to be Cyril Maposa. The question then is, well, but who else? Who are our speakers? What are the coalitions? At, at this point, i got to say, rule one of coalitions is don't talk. Talk to each other, of course. But don't talk to the, the, the media. Don't leak. Because that just throws things. And I think so far, they've done that incredibly well. We've got a bit of a sense of who's talking to who, but not massively. This is the round, 1844.9. Now, 
this was helped by the U.S. inflation data. The rand strengthened a fair whiz when that came through. Uh, basically, the market said, you're quite liking that. But it looks just zoom out a year, and what we're seeing is the rand is holding on. In fact, we've got uh, a bunch of, we're looking at a daily chart here. So it peaked at, uh, yep, uh, six of the six, that was last week. Uh, the RAND's behaving. The RAND is saying that it's looking for a centralist. It's expecting, let's be clear, a centralist, which would be a ANC, uh, a DA, IFP type of coalition, rather than an extreme coalition, which would be either MK, who are on the far right, or the EFF, who are on the far left. That's certainly what the currency is expecting. Things can change fast. Uh, they can change in an absolute minute in this regard. But uh, so far, so good. I mean, the, the, the market is, 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 is um, I want to say, behaving perhaps, but maybe it's the politicians. We will find out at 10 o'clock on Friday uh, all the details and who our next president will be. For now, I know as much as the next person, which is, truthfully, not a heck of a lot at all, just what we read in the media, of course. JC is a registered trademark of the JC Limited. JC Direct is an independent broadcast and is not endorsed or affiliated with, nor has it been authorized or otherwise approved by JC Limited. The views expressed in this program are solely those of the presenter and do not necessarily reflect the views of JC Limited. Uh, so next week, my look ahead. There's not a heck of a lot happening, to be honest. What we do have next Wednesday is both local and UK inflation. That's an important number for us as well, uh, so we can start getting some rate cuts out of our MPC. Uh, we'll see when that comes through. But otherwise, we're going to leave that there for this week. Remember those events, uh, trading uh, what the, trading as a side hustle, just one lap.com slash events for more information. My name is Simon. We'll chat again next week. Until then, look after yourself, and if you can... Look after somebody else as well. Cheers all.